So there's this riff and whenever I played it, something felt off. And recently I found out it wasn't just me who has this problem. So I've been playing this song my whole life and I still don't know how to play it. This is Tim Pierce, Los Angeles based professional session guitarist. And if anyone knows how hard it is to sound like Hendrix, it's gonna be him. I will even go a step further. <laughs> I can't play this song. It felt impossible to make it as groovy or as soulful as the original. Um, it just didn't have the same impact. And I think I finally know why. In order to understand what's happening, listen to these two loops. You can notate either of these rhythms in exactly the same way, but one little word changes the entire rhythm or feel of the groove. Swing. So this is the story of one of the most legendary guitar intros ever recorded. And now it completely changed the way we look at the guitar. In essence, it's really simple. It's just a basic chord progression played in a 4-4 time signature. That means that in one bar we count to four. Four beats that together form a strong grid that musicians lean into as they play. And this is known as the pulse. But we can divide these beats into smaller rhythmical units, subdivisions. Two notes in a single beat is eighth notes, four sixteenth, and eight is 30 second notes. And typically the notes played on the beats, especially the first beat, gets the most emphasis, whereas playing notes in between of the beats make them sound weaker and more syncopated. And it's what happens in between the beats that's where the answer and the magic lies. Most of music is played with a straight feel, so where two eighth notes are played with an equal duration and same length. You'll hear it everywhere throughout music history, from classical... ...to modern pop... ...and from electronic... Too hard one. But at the turn of the 19th century, a vibrant mix of cultures and musical styles in the south of the United States created something new and exciting. A style popularized by musicians such as Duke Ellington, Louis Armstrong and Count Basie, played with uneven eighth notes and a syncopated groove. They call it swing. Although the concept of these uneven notes was not entirely new, I mean in France the Baroque and the classical music did use the concept of notes in égal, unequal notes, this new genre took it to a whole other level. So the, the swing dictated the sound and the DNA of the music. And here's the thing about swing, every genre, every tune, and sometimes even down to the player themselves, as we'll see with Jimi Hendrix, has their own unique way of interpreting this feel. So the easiest way to explain swing is to take that second eighth note and instead of playing it exactly halfway is to push it more towards the back, creating a longer and a shorter note. Do it a little bit and we get soft swing. And if you push it back further we get a triplet swing or a shuffle feel as we'll learn later. To even a hard swing. Swing would be one longer and one shorter note. Exactly. And straight would be. Which, and it's so. It was so weird. Radical different. But when discussing the blues, in the end, Hendrix was a kid of the blues, we often refer to a different term, the shuffle. You can see this as the blues' version of swing, but the shuffle is a bit more defined than swing. When dividing a beat not into two eighth notes, but into three eighth notes, we get something that's called a triplet. One E and two E and three E and four E and. And remember that triplet swing we saw, that's what we get when we take out that second triplet. One E and two E and three E and four E and. Voila. We created a shuffle feel. But I don't think that's a term that is suited when discussing Little Wing. 
because although within the shuffle field there's again a whole gamut of different ways to play, just listen to the differences between the Delta Blues and the Texas Blues and the Chicago Blues. You'll find that very often the song is played with that same feel. Going back and forth between swing and straight or drastically changing feels is something you'd very seldomly hear, especially at the time. Well, I hear drummers doing that in modern R&B and it's the most exciting thing ah, yeah, when yeah, everybody's yeah. playing straight and the drummer goes into a shuffle yeah. just for a couple of bars yeah. or vice versa. When everybody's playing a shuffle and the drummer goes straight for a yeah. couple of bars, it's an awesome thing to pay attention to. But way before, in 1967, Jimi Hendrix recorded a song that would change the landscape of guitar forever, where he brilliantly plays around with these different concepts. He sways elegantly back and forth without committing to one single feel. I realized that, that I, I wasn't actually capturing his feel. There is a swing that happens on occasion, rhythmically. Yeah, right? When I first figured that out, I was like, huh? So I loaded up the track in my DAW and of course we know he played this without a metronome. So in order to find his pulse, his rhythm, I automated the click track so that I followed his timing. Over here you see it. So this gives us a good indication of where he placed the subdivisions and how he felt the groove. And of course we see how swing is a factor in all of this. And it's pretty funny to see how much he was dragging and pushing. So check out the click track, really going all over the place. I love it. I made a video about this analyzing Bold as Love that you can check out over here, showing you exactly this. So now let's go to that first lick again. How do you hear this, straight or shuffle? Those two muted notes it screams swing to me. And indeed, if we zoom in on that second note, we see it's pushed back. And you will hear the difference right away if we fix this, if we put that second note on the grid. Let's have a listen. That's not what he's playing. That's a totally different feel, right? So no, this is definitely a mild swing over there. Now we go to something very cool, so that run up to the G major chord. Okay, let's let's zoom in on this. Because we see something interesting happening on beats two and four. Let's have a listen. Notice how every note is nicely lined up, but not on beat two and four. These are pushed forward significantly, basically like what we saw with swing, but now the other way around. Let's slow it down. So listen to how it gives a sense of urgency, which gets lost if we put the notes in the correct place. And back to the original. He only played it this way once. Every time he played it after that, it was different. So yeah. you see him play this live, yeah. to your point, the note choices are different. Yeah. So it just, it, this was a capture of where he was at that moment. And then in every live performance, you'll see differences. So he didn't write this out or he didn't thought about it like this in so much detail. But if you hear other recordings of this song, he uses exactly the same movements, back and forth, pushing, dragging, swing, no swing, straight. This is just an analysis of his natural groove, of his feel. As you'll hear in leg number three on the G major chord. So what you immediately hear is there is a clear separation between the first half, straight, and the second half, shuffle. So straight. He moves from a straight feel to a shuffle feel halfway. Yeah, that's it. Swing. A uh, swing, yeah. <laughs> Okay, he moves to that A minor chord. And here, I wanna show you something because this is so good. So A minor. Okay, I wanna zoom in now on beat two. So we talked about how swing can have different percentages of swing, right? You can have a light swing, a heavy swing, a medium swing. So here there's four notes being played, 16th notes. So you clearly see we have a longer note and a shorter note. And again, the longer note and a shorter note. So this, is a soft swing. 
And here's the problem, because with so many people learning straight from tabs, all these subtleties are very hard to notate. Here's one of the highest rated tabs out there, and we see it's notated in straight 16th notes, moving to a triplet feel. All the mojo gets lost, so this is how it would sound straight. So that is the swing feel going on. And listen how he continues with the triplet swing. <laughs> so as you see, it's all in the subtleties, but the subtleties make a very big difference. So because if you were to move on and play it straight, well, that is something Hendrix does as well in the E minor chord. <laughs> Exactly, what is happening? Great example. The second half of the chord is played super straight. This bit. There's no shuffle whatsoever. He's playing more staccato, more emphasis on the notes. He's very deliberately playing that in a straight feel. And we can move over the entire intro and find things of beauty everywhere, but there's one of my favorites right at the end when we go from the C to the D chord. But I have to be very careful with this because I just know this video is gonna be copyright claimed and I'm just showing you short segments to make sure it won't be blocked. But I just quickly wanna tell you this. So if you really want to learn all the techniques that Hendrix is using here, where he brilliantly combines triads, double stops, all these beautiful embellishments and inflections I think you love my guitar course, Next Level Playing. I've gotten some amazing reviews from students going through the course saying that everything suddenly clicks from solos to rhythm guitar and from practical music theory to the blues. And it's a carefully put together roadmap that takes you through seven levels of everything you need to know to become a great player. Anyway, if you want to support this channel and help me continue making these videos, I do love for you to check it out. I, I think you're gonna love it. Anyway, let's now go to that last bit where he plays the C chord. Okay, so something very spicy is happening. Swing, D. And here you hear it very well, that first half of the D chord. Right, that is just a swing feel. Doesn't get more swing than this. But then he jumps into, let's have a listen. That lick at the end over the D chord, that is super straight. It is blowing my mind. And this pretty much says it all. Here is the entire intro, nine bars, just over 30 seconds long. And in that time frame, boom, everything yellow is played straight. Orange is a soft swing and red is a triplet swing. He is changing feels 13 times just in that little intro. It's really astonishing to see. I'm sure he wasn't thinking like this. No one thinks about music like this when they're playing, but analyzing brilliant minds let us grow as musicians. And when we're actually playing music, we can stop thinking. It's exactly these subtleties that make it groove, that make it swing, and that make it breathe. And that's the reason why whenever I was playing this, it never sounded as funky and as soulful as when Hendrix did. So that's already two different takes on the same thing, but both are equally as cool. I like it.